Yes, we are. Good morning. <laughs> We're here. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Let me just do something here and I will be right with you. All right. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. This is Stephanie Johnson, and you are tuned in to just the word. We are here this morning. Thank God. Amen. And this is another day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I am so grateful this morning to be here. Amen. God bless you. Good morning to everybody joining. Good morning to those that'll be joining a little later. God bless you, Sister Blewett. I, I was looking forward to you. That smiling face. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God is so good and he's worthy to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I got a right. And I got a reason, hallelujah. You have a right and you have a reason to praise the Lord. The mere fact that you are alive this morning and you're well, amen, whatever state you're in, my foot is in a cast, but I thank God that I, I'm just, I'm here, amen. And so we are grateful this morning. I'm gonna go into a word of prayer before I get excited, amen, uh, and, and, get, and, and go and, and take a dive into the deep. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you this morning, hallelujah, for a new day, new mercies that we see, new compassions, hallelujah, we see, hallelujah, grace and mercy following us today, and we thank you, God, we thank you that we woke up, hallelujah, to your blessings and your benefits and everything that you have bestowed upon us in this day. We have the activities in our limbs and the blood is running warm in our veins. Most of all, God, we belong to you. We are certainly saved, shown up, sanctified, and baptized with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. God, you've been so good to us. And so in this day, Lord, allow us to be a blessing to somebody else. In the name of Jesus, open opportunity for us to be a witness to somebody today in the name of Jesus. Your grace is sufficient for this day. We're not worrying about tomorrow. Yesterday is gone. But your grace, hallelujah, is sufficient for right now in this day. So, Lord, we thank you. Order our steps and let not any iniquity have dominion over us. Open the blinded eyes and unstop deaf ears. Let somebody listen in and give their life to you today. In the name of Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And God, I'm going to give you the praise. I'm going to give you the glory and I'm going to give you the honor in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, again, good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Just the Word with evangelist Stephanie Johnson. I'm really excited to be on this morning because we've been off for a couple of weeks. I had a surgery on my foot and been out of commission, but God is still God and he's been with me all the way through it, amen. And he's with me right now, hallelujah. Matter of fact, I'm praising God today because the Lord is blessing me right now, right now. And then right now, after right now is over, he's still blessing. And so we are so grateful today. God is a good God. And I have a good, good, good um, lesson today. Amen. Uh, I don't know how many days I might be on this. Amen. But uh, Second Chronicles. Let's go to the Old Testament. Second Chronicles. Amen. That's after First Chronicles. Amen. Second Chronicles, chapter 20 and verse. Um, let's start at verse number one. Amen. Because there's so much in this passage. This is one of my favorite passages. And I just want to talk about today um, that that sometimes life, you know, we all here living this life. And and, and there's a song that said, I, I, I'm living this life so that I can live again. Amen. Now, we all going to live again somewhere. But where your eternal destination is, is up to you right now. Amen. So uh, I'm living this life to live again. And I'm on my way to heaven. Yes, indeed. But during this life, it brings difficulties. During this lifetime, it brings uh, adversities and um, challenges uh, in this life. 
And 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 the whole thing about it is, I used to hear the old saints say that my heart is fixed and my mind is made up. So come what may, Sister Stephanie Johnson's heart is fixed and her mind is made up to stay with God and to serve the Lord. And so, and, and if you could type in there, my heart is fixed and my mind is made up. I don't care if it's just one or two, ain't nobody on there. I'll type it in there. My heart is fixed and my mind is made up. My heart is fixed and my mind is made up to serve the Lord. Amen. And so it's a blessing. Amen. To have a made up mind. Because whatever comes, whatever goes, it's not going to move you. You're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of the waters and you shall not be moved. Your roots are deep and they're deep in, in, in rooted, deeply rooted in Jesus Christ. Amen. You're standing on a firm foundation, not easily shaken. You, 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 might, you might bend, but you won't break. Hallelujah. And so today I want to talk about King Jehoshaphat. You know, uh, this, this was a king, amen. He started reigning, uh, I believe, at the age of 35, as according to the scriptures. And uh, he reigned for 25 years. And, uh, uh, and during this time, the times of the, of, of the kings uh, of Israel and Judah, uh, there were just a handful of, of kings that did that which was right. In the, in the eyes of God. There were just a handful. Now, Jehoshaphat was one of those. In fact, he was one of the better ones that did that which was right in the eyes of God. But also his father, Asa, that preceded the throne, uh, uh, preceded the, the throne of Judah before him, amen, uh, was, did that which was right in the eyes of God. And I'm sure Jehoshaphat watched his father work and watched his father uh, seek the Lord, watched his father uh, look to God for certain things. If you go back in Second Chronicles, I believe around about chapter 14 in those areas, it talks about the wars and the challenges that Asa faced. But today we're talking about Jehoshaphat, but he did have a good example. And it's so important as parents that we give our children a good example. Our children ought to see us praying to God. Our children ought to see us seeking God. I don't have children, but my nieces and my nephews, they, they, they know that I'm going to God. Even when they talk to me, they already know. Auntie going to tell us we're going to pray. Auntie going to do this. Auntie going to do that. As far as seeking God and looking to God and trusting the word of God. And so Ace, uh, Jehoshaphat began his reign. Amen. And when he began his reign, when you are a leader, Amen. And, and, and you're a leader that's led by God. You're going to lead and rule in the right way. Jehoshaphat made sure that the, uh, the, the priest and the Levites and the princes and the judges, he, uh, he, he, he wanted them to educate the people in the ways of the Lord. And it's important not only that we tell and teach the people the ways of the Lord, but that they can see uh, us, our obedience in God and see God in us and see us operating in the ways of the Lord. And so, and be an, a good example of, of what we talk about, you know? And so Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, excuse me, commanded the judges to be right, commanded the educators to be right. All that were in position and in authority, he commanded that they be right. Now, as we go on and we read about Jehoshaphat, we find that there were some things, there were some weaknesses that he had, like we as leaders or non-leaders, but we all have some type of human weaknesses. He formed alliances with Ahab and, and, and another uh, a wicked king. Um, he formed alliances with them. But today I want to talk about him looking to God in the time of challenge in the time of adversity, in the time of being overwhelmed, he sought himself, set himself to, 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 to seek God. Amen. So we're going to start. Amen. Uh, my focus today, like I said, is, is when he was surrounding, when surrounding nations attacked him, he trusted God. 
So Second Chronicles chapter 20, uh, <clears throat> Jehoshaphat finds himself surrounded. Somebody came with some news, amen, that, that he was surrounded by uh, the Ammonites and the Moabites and the children of Mount Seir, which were Esau's kids, uh, his descendants. And uh, the scripture tells us that um, Jehoshaphat, in fact, I'm going to read, let me read a little bit so that you can get the gist of where this lesson is coming from and what I'm talking about. Chapter 20 in 2 Chronicles, verse 1. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea of the side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazam Tamar, which is in Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. I want you to remember that scripture. He set himself to seek the Lord. All right. Verse four, and Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation in Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Art, not, art thou not our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt <clears throat> there therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, for Solomon's temple, saying, if when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine. We stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help us. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O oh God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes <laughs> are upon thee. Our eyes are upon thee. I don't know what to do, Lord. I don't know how to fix it. There's so, it's so much happening right now. I, I, my eyes are upon thee. Let me continue reading and then I'm gonna go back and expound on it. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeiel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. That's why it's important to go to church. You don't never, you never know when God's spirit is going to fall on somebody to give you your answer. But I, I, let me keep reading. And he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Be not afraid <laughs> nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. Somebody just type in, the battle isn't mine. All right. Tomorrow go ye down against them. 
Behold, they come up from the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Now, I'm going to stop reading right there. And I'm going to go back and expound on this because it's important that we understand that if God be for us, who can be against us? I believe it was it was uh, Elijah and his servant went out to look across the hills because there was an army coming up against them. And he saw all the enemy spread across the hill. Amen. And he came back and told Elijah about it. But Elijah told him, bottom line, if God be for us, who can be against us? And, and, and God is, is more with, with God is more with us than with them. And we've got to know that even in our challenges. So the scripture says, let me get back to the passage. The scripture says that Jehoshaphat feared when he got news, you know, sometimes the bill collectors and sometimes we'll get news that uh, something happened to our children or something drastic happened in our church family. Um, and, and we'll get news that uh, something has happened, uh, maybe uh, the death of a loved one. And then on top of that, uh, maybe uh, our, our spouse gets sick. And then on top of that, maybe our children end up in jail or, you know, just all kind of news is coming and all type of things are coming in our lives. Maybe we get laid off of the job. Maybe we hurt ourselves or we have surgery. And so it puts us down for a while. So then everything starts piling up on us. But whatever it is, Hallelujah. You don't have to fear. Hallelujah. Jehoshaphat, the scripture says that he feared. But this is what he did quickly. Quickly, he did not allow fear to overtake him. He didn't allow fear to have him back down and be consumed with emotion. Because it's easy for us to be consumed with emotions of things. It's easy for us to be consumed with what's going on. But we got to be led by the spirit of God, not by our emotions. Yes, we're human and we're going to feel. But soon, right in there, the Holy Ghost will click in and say, wait. Mm -mm. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In everything, give thanks. Hallelujah. The, the, the word of God will start springing up out of your belly. And the spirit will start talking to you and lifting you up. Yes, indeed. I, I'm telling you, it, 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 that's what God does. And so uh, Jehoshaphat, he did not allow himself to be overwhelmed and taken with fear. But number one, he's the king. People are looking at him. Somebody's looking to you. Number two, I serve the true and the living God. Why should I fear? Amen. Why should I be afraid? Amen. Second Timothy chapter one and seven says, for, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. So even when things are happening and it looks like you're going to lose your house, it looks like they're going to repossess your car. It looks like your health is, oh, Shaye. It looks like things, everything is coming against you. Look, we don't have to fear. All we have to understand is what Romans 8 and 28 says, that all things working are working together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. But let me finish uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. It says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I tell you, my my mind went back a, a couple of weeks ago when I first had the surgery. It was a little difficult because I wasn't used to people taking care of me. I wasn't used to leaning on folk and I, I'm used to getting around. I'm the one to be helping, you know, and all of that. But, but, but God, I had to settle myself and the Holy Ghost said, in everything, give thanks. And I'm sitting in here crying. I'm sitting in my living room at the door just looking out, crying. I can't go outside. My dog is running around. I can't play. I can't kick my husband. I can't push him around. I can't, you know, I, I'm just, I, and, and I almost had a pity party. But the Lord said, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Somebody just say, type in, give thanks. That's it. No matter what's happening, give thanks. Because it's working together for your good if you belong to God. Oh, yeah. We don't know it. We don't see it. We don't know the outcome. But God does. We just got to trust and believe God. So Jehoshaphat, hallelujah, he set himself after the spirit of God kicked in and said, whoa, whoa, you the king now. 
You don't have no business fearing. Jehoshaphat came to himself and he set himself. The Bible said he said, verse three and four says, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. That's right. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. He's a very present help in the time of need. We've got to know what the scripture says and stand on the word of God because the enemy wants you to look at your situation and look at all these things that are coming at you. But the devil is a liar. Mm. My focus and my eyes, I'm going to look to the hills. My focus is on God. And so he set himself to seek the Lord. You know, we got to set ourselves. And that means that we're not allowing ourselves to be overtaken with whatever is happening around us. But we've taken a halt. Halt your spirit. Mm. Halt it. Stop. Say, wait a minute. What does the word say? Wait a minute. What did my God say he would do for me? Wait a minute. I serve the all-powerful God. Wait a minute. So he halt himself and decide the course of action. Okay, wait a minute. I'm not going to be overtaken by this. I'm not going to have no pity party. I'm not going to be overwhelmed with this. Mm -mm. I'm not going to allow this. In other words, I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> Y'all know how we say, I ain't going there. I'm not going there. I'm going to seek the Lord. I'm going to give thanks. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to worship my God. I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus because I don't know what's happening, but God does. And I belong to him. Psalm 61 and 2 says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Shaye. Hallelujah. When my heart is overwhelmed, when things are just taking me, my son, I, I, somebody's on the feed now and their son is in the military and they're yet praying for their son. They're praying for their children. Amen. Others are on the feed. My sister, my nieces, we're praying for them. You know, and sometimes if we allow their situations to overtake us, we can be overwhelmed. But the Bible said, God, lead me, the spirit of God, lead me to the rock that's higher than I when I'm overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock. Oh, God, things can be going on in your home. Then you go to work, things are going on. And, and, and sometimes at the church house, things are going on. But Lord, when I'm overwhelmed, lead me to that. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Jesus is the rock. Amen. And so as Judah gathered themselves into the house of the Lord, Jehoshaphat begins to pray. That's why it's important that you have a pastor and that you're in a church that the Lord has given you that pastor according to his heart that's feeding you with knowledge and understanding. It's important because the Lord is going to give him what you need. So Jehoshaphat begins to pray. Amen. Now, mind you, the children of Ammon, the children, the Ammonites, the Moabites and the children of Mount Seir, which is Esau kids, all of this multitude was coming against Judah. Amen. They were coming against Judah. But Jehoshaphat, they go to the house of the Lord and they remember the promises of God because in his word, in his promises, all his promises are yea and amen. So they remembered. That's what we got to do. We got to remember the word of the Lord. We got to remember what God said because there is no variableness or changing or alterations or it, what God said. It is so. That's it. That's why this is just the word because <laughs> that's the answer. Amen. He acknowledges that God is God. First of all, he acknowledges that God is God. What is one of our favorite passages? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. And in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Yes, in all thy ways. So whenever it's, whatever is happening, whatever is going down, acknowledge God. You are my God. Lord, I don't know what's happening. And you know I'm confused. You know I'm struggling. You know I'm ha what, what, how this is making me feel. 
But God, you still my God. Acknowledge him. He is, look, we got to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher. Look, Ushaye, the author and the finisher of our faith. We have not such a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows how you feel. Jesus paid it all. He went through it all and he paid it all. And he knows how we feel. So ain't no need of shucking and jiving with him and acting like all is well when all isn't well. He knows how we feel. He's been through how we feel. And first of all, God is all knowing. Yes. So acknowledge him and he'll direct you. Then a Jehoshaphat reminds God of his promises. Oh, yes. I, I, I reminded God, so God, you brought me through brain surgery. This foot little toe thing is nothing with you. The brain surgery is small. Everything, my pastor says it all the time, everything is small in God's eyes. It, 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 it is nothing. <laughs> Look at all the nations are just a drop in the bucket to God. <laughs> so, so, you know, our situation is, is nothing it, 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 it's not that it's nothing to God, but it's small in his eyes. And there's nothing that he cannot take care of and handle. And so he reminds God of the promises that he gave Abraham. He reminds God uh, that, 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 that he said, he, if we go to the church, if we go to the temple that was built to you and, and dedicated to you, Lord, you said you would hear us and you would help us. You said if we just even turn, there's another passage in scripture said, we just turn in the direction of the temple. You said you would help us and you would be with us. Amen. And you would take care of us and answer our prayers. Amen. He is there to help his children. We are his children. He is our father. He also reminds God of how when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, when they came out of Egypt and they came to the land of the Ammonites and the Moabites and even uh, 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 Mount Seir's children, Esau's children, how the Lord did not allow them to battle with them. But he allowed them to just pass on around those cities and on around those towns and keep on going. And because they did not battle with them and try to overtake take their land, amen, and they kept on going, um, then uh, Jehoshaphat says, Lord, you didn't even allow us to battle with them and you, you didn't defeat them or allow us to defeat them. And this is how they repay us. You know, I didn't do nothing to you, but this is how you repay me. And that's how people do. You know, a lot of people be the debts would have done things to you. I'm about to use the right vernacular. A lot of people will do things to you and you haven't done anything to them. You've been nice. You've been kind. You've been sweet. You've been holy. You, 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 you've treated them with respect. And, and, and this is how they treat you. This is how they do you in return. Well, the devil children going to do you wrong anyway. So you might as well accept it. I don't care if they're relatives or not. You know, that, that's just how they did. They treated Jesus wrong. But this is what Jehoshaphat was reminding them. This is how they repay us. We didn't do, we didn't bother them. We went on, passed on by them when we could have defeated them back when we came out of Egypt. But now here they are coming against us. This is how they repay us for our kindness. <laughs> oh yeah. But God, he said, <laughs> he said, avenge not yourselves, but rather give, rather give place to wrath. Because vengeance is mine and I'll repay, saith the Lord. That's right. So you don't have to worry about getting nobody back. You don't have to worry about revenge or about nothing. Just let God handle it. Amen. And you can keep your peace. You can still stay holy and be saved. Amen. <laughs> All right. So Jehoshaphat reminds God of how he didn't have, he didn't allow them to fight up against the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the children of Mount Seir. He said, but Lord, we, we, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to handle all of these things coming against us, God, all these people coming against us. And this is a great multitude. But I tell you what we do know how to do, set our eyes on you, Lord. He said, but our eyes are upon you, Lord. We may not, I may not know how to handle all this trouble, Trouble don't last always. As a matter of fact, the scriptures say we've been endured for a night, mm. but joy cometh in the morning. 
We may not know how to handle every situation that, that we're faced with, but we do know the problem solver. We belong <laughs> to the problem solver. Hallelujah. Our eyes are upon me. In other words, Jeho Jehoshaphat was telling them, even though we did right by them, this is how they treat us in return. Well, that's all right, Lord. My eyes are still on you. I, 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 back in the day before we were saved, we may have gotten somebody back. We may have fought our own battles, but now we belong to God. Amen. And this is why it's, it's, it's important to, to, to go to church too. When I was studying, I, I was looking at that. I said, this is why it's important to go to church. Because as Jehoshaphat was praying, the Lord was sending the answer through somebody. Jehazel. Let me say that right. Ooh. Jehaziel. I think I said it right. But the Lord of the Lord was moving upon this man. Um, God will move upon somebody through a testimony. He'll move upon them through his word. Somebody might sing a song and you don't know why people are crying or whatever, but the Lord is ministering to them, ministering to that need, ministering to to whatever situation is going on in them. The spirit of the Lord knows everything. Amen. It could be through a prophecy or through something that somebody might say, but God will give an answer to the problem. Amen. If we seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he's yet near, he will answer us. That's right. So verse 15 in this passage tells us, and he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. Now, let me back up for a minute. The spirit of the Lord has come upon Jehaziel. And so now after the prayer has gone forth, when you pray, wait for your answer. Hallelujah. Because prayer is communication with you and God. And when you pray, the Bible says if we pray according to his will, we shall have whatever we ask. We shall have whatever we ask. And so they prayed and the answer came and Jehaziel is talking here. And he said, hearken ye. In other words, listen up all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus said the Lord unto you, be not afraid, <laughs> nor dismayed. Don't be confused about it by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. That's what I want you to hear. Hear the instructions. Amen. Hear what God is saying to his people. God is saying that to you right now. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about it. God got that. Listen, every one of us was, is somebody's children. <laughs> and when I was out there in the world, somebody was praying for me. My mother had gone on to glory, had passed away when I was 15. I was out there doing everything I knew to do for 18 years. Somebody was praying. Somebody's children, y'all, y'all, children might not have been bad as some of us were. Some of y'all, y'all, y'all on here. I know y'all wasn't uh, angels like all your life. <laughs> Maybe you didn't do certain things, but you did other things. But we all were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But God had His hand on our lives. Is my point. God had heard your prayers. Before you call, He answered you, and while you're yet speaking, He hears you. So he's telling you, don't be afraid. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about when everything gets lean, your, your cabinets get bare and things get lean in the house. The bills are due. Amen. Uh, 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 what, is, what, what my song saying? Uh, uh, say you got a light bill due <laughs> and you got a gas bill too. And the telephone is get disconnected and you're waiting on your next paycheck. I tell you what you ought to do. Jesus will see you through. That's right. The baby needs a pair of shoes. Yes, right. Everything is happening. Bills are due. Uh, it, look, a foreclosure notice coming in the mail. Pink notices coming from the job. 
pink notice is coming in the mail. Lights going to be turned. All of that. Listen, don't be afraid and don't be dismayed by reason of all of this stuff that's happening. Oh, it, 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 it's designed to bring you down. It's designed, the devil cometh not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. It's designed to destroy you. It's, destroy, it's designed to help have you to take your eyes off of God. But he said he, it, it's designed to, to, to have you to focus your thoughts on the problem and not on God. But the scripture said that thou will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he trusted in thee. So we don't have to be dismayed by all this stuff that's happening. Because guess what? The battle is not ours. The Lord have allowed these things to come upon us so that he can prove himself. I tell you, there was a time when we were sitting in this very house, foreclosure notice, my husband's working. They laid me off. They fired me from my job because I didn't accept making half what I was making on a graveyard ship at a lower position. And I left there in good standings. I left there in demand. But because of some things that had gone down in my, on my job and the stand that I took against homosexuality, they, you know, that's another testimony. But God, <laughs> Woo, I tell you, I'm telling you, you don't need to fight in this battle. Just set yourself. Just know that it's working together for your good. Set yourself to just keep your mind on, the, on Jesus. Keep your mind on the Lord. No matter what's going on, it could be great or it could be small. I'm going to stop right here because there's so much in this passage and I'm going to pick it up next week. <laughs> I'm going to pick it up next week because there's so much in this passage that we can glean and we can gather, you know, from. But you don't have to fight. There was so, this was a great multitude, larger than Jerusalem and Judah put together. You had the Ammonites, the Moabites, the, 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 the children of Mount Seir, and it said others beside them coming against Jews, uh, uh, Judah and Jerusalem. But greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. So you got to get that. Somebody type in there. Greater is he that's in me. Yeah, great. Just proclaim it. Yeah, let it come out of your mouth. Let the devil know and everybody else that God is great and greatly to be praised. And he's greater than any problem, anything that I face. Amen. Things might be going on in the church. Things may be going on in your job, in your neighborhood, whatever. God is great. This pandemic has not stopped. But God is great. Amen. We don't know what's going to be happening in the political climate, but God is great. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't know what's going down with the, all our stuff sitting on the ocean, but God <laughs> will supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody type in, but God. I don't know where y'all at. Are y'all still there? I guess so. Somebody type in, but God. Yes, because he will supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. Yes, he will. Because the cattle of everything belong to God. So he's going to fight your battle. And with all of this great multitude coming against this king, he set himself. And that's what I want to admonish you to do today. Set yourself. In other words, stand still. Listen, don't cry about it anymore. Don't talk about it anymore. Don't call your BFF and tell them about it anymore. Don't listen. You don't even have to talk to nobody. Talk to your spouse back and forth. You don't have to do nothing. Just leave it to Jesus. And I'm a witness that he'll see you through. Mm. Leave them children in God's hand. Because they have a calling on their lives that we don't even see. We don't even know. But they're your children. So you're concerned about them, rightfully so. Put them in the hands of the Lord. Amen. That co-worker that's nagging, bothering you and cussing at you and treating you wrong. Leave her in the hands of the Lord. I'm a living witness. <laughs> you just do your job and write them up if they're in error. 
but 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 be steadfast and unmovable amen do what you're supposed to do that's right in god's sight and god will come through for you when my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh <laughs> they stumbled and fell and i hated to see their fall and i saw some of them i saw some and i hated to see it they lost their jobs and different things but when, when people come against God's people, God will fight the battle. He said, you'll look for the place and you won't be able to find it. Amen. So don't worry about what's going on uh, uh, when the enemy comes against you. Don't worry about when the adversary comes in and they bring all of his hosts. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing to God. Nothing. He he ought to know by now when he was defeated on the cross, but 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 he's still given some more space until the end of time, until he's cast into um, uh, uh, the lake of fire. So he's doing everything he can right now to bring accusation against the saints and to wear the saints out. That's scripture. But greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Listen, I'm gonna pray for y'all right now that's listening and that's looking on. Amen. Yeah. Uh, press the hearts and the like buttons. And, and, and I forgot to ask you all to share this, but I want to pray for you now that's listening. Gracious Father, we got people that's on this feed right now, people that are listening now and that'll be listening later. Lord God, that have children, that have loved ones, <clears throat> that have friends, that have associates, have enemies that are standing in need of a blessing. Oh, Somebody needs to be saved. Somebody needs to be delivered. Somebody needs to be rescued, God. Somebody need just need the, 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 the weight to be lifted, Father. You, you, you're a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer. And you said to cast all of our cares upon you for you careth for us. So help us to cast our children on you. Help us to cast our problems and our concerns, Lord God, our, our, our financial needs. Help us to cast everything, our health situation. Help us to cast it all on you because you care for us. And you have, look, you said that, 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 that you, you have an expected end for us. You said your thoughts towards us are, are peace and not of evil because you have an expected end. So, Lord, we thank you. Help us to wait on that expected end, on the manifestations of that expected end in whatever you're doing right now. Bless our children. Bless our communities. Bless our churches. Bless our government in the name of Jesus. Let your peace reign in our homes in the name of Jesus. Where there's division and strife, I ask that your peace reign. I bind division and strife, confusion and perplexity. I bind it in the name of Jesus and I cast it out and I lose peace and harmony and love in that home. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. And God, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I'm asking you to look on those, Lord God. If there's somebody here that's not saved, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna ask you right now, if you are not saved, to bow your head and repeat after me. Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. I need to be saved. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that he was buried, that he rose, on the third day with all power in his hands. I believe that Jesus Christ lives and Father, 
because he lives, I can live again. All right, I want you to tell the Lord, thank you right now. Hallelujah, clap your hands and tell God, thank you. Because he said, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's what the Bible said. Amen. And so if you did that right now, you are saved. Hallelujah. And we thank God for you. Listen. Across the bottom of the page, if you need a church home, the uh, St. John Powerhouse Church of God in Christ address uh, uh, and the time of our service on, on, on Sunday morning uh, and on Wednesday morning is on the ticker. There's more information that if you need, you can call any one of those two numbers on there and we'll be more than happy to pick up. Amen. If we don't pick up, leave a message, but we will pick up. Amen. And respond to your need. Amen. Now I'm going to put something here. Amen. God bless you all. God, I thank y'all. Thank you, Nurse Clark. Thank you, Tracy. Amen. Thank y'all for joining this morning. Amen. And whoever else joined on, I, I don't know who's there, but I'm going to put something across here. Amen. We will be while I'm putting this on, I'm going to ask you to like and share this video. I should have done that at the beginning. So anytime you come on, just go ahead and like it and share it. And during the video, if you can tap the hearts and, you know, just put up some likes and some hand claps and whatever. Amen. God bless you all. And, and just put some responses in the comments as you feel it. Amen. Um, this coming Wednesday. Amen. We, I tell you, I have a phenomenal pastor. Amen. And first lady, we will be celebrating their, uh, we will be, uh, uh, appreciating them. Amen. We're having an appreciation service on this Wednesday at 7 PM. And if you look at the ticker below, amen, the information is going across Wednesday at 7 PM. We'll be on zoom. And the ID to get on Zoom is there. And the passcode, that's what PC is, the passcode to get on that Zoom appreciation service is on there. Again, our pastor and wife's appreciation service will be this coming Wednesday. I believe that's the 17th of November, 2021 at 7 p.m. on Zoom. All right. Amen. This video will be uploaded to YouTube shortly. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you. I want to thank God for my husband that has been so, uh, and all that he, you know, he's just been taking care of me. My sister came and comes and she takes care of me. Sister Sharon has come by. She's taking care of me. Mother Henry Amen. I want to thank God for the sisters that have called me, Evangelist Bernetta, um, uh, Mercy, Evangelist Mercy Johnson, Annie, Charity, everybody that has called me, that have texted me, uh, the mothers in Zion, Mother Smith and Mother Drake, and they've called Mother Horton, they've come by, amen, to see about me. It's, it's, it, it just makes your heart, it does your heart good when the people respond when you have a need. And, and, you know, I ask them, they, they just say, what can I do? And, and I'm thankful. I'm so grateful uh, for God's love in his people. Amen. And I tell you, it's important. The Bible tells you to do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And, and when, when you do, you don't do looking for, for it to come back to you. You just do because that's the love of God constraining you. But I'm grateful to God for all those that have helped me, even at the church yesterday, the ushers and, and Brother Fred, I tell you, they, I, I'm telling you, I didn't even have to, I'm just standing up to praise God and Hicks and Fred, Fred said, I'm all right, don't fall, you know, <laughs> like, okay, I'm all right, I'm just praising the Lord. So God is a good God and he's worthy to be praised, amen. Um, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Share this video with somebody. You all have a fabulous Monday, a marvelous Monday, a miracle working Monday, a merciful Monday. Amen. The sky is clear. It's sunny on this side of the of, of the states. Amen. I, I wish I could get out and get in my car, but I have to sit in the house and look out the window. But anyway, praise the Lord. God bless you all and God be with you all. We're going to pick this up again next week, Lord willing. Amen. God be with you until we meet again. 
In Jesus' name, amen and amen.